Hey guys and welcome back to Schneid's 15. Today we got a marine exhaust manifold on the bench. Uh, we're going to just do some talking about it. I found a lot of people are interested in my marine videos and uh, I know I like uh, just seeing stuff that's always like a lot of boats it's hard to pull one of these off and just uh, check it out. So we're going to go over some stuff and maybe you'll learn something. I'm uh, just going to talk about some stuff that it'll it'll make it easier to troubleshoot issues that you're having and uh, just show you uh, how the marine exhaust works because I always have questions on how they are how they work versus a car. Everybody knows how a car exhaust manifold works. It gas goes in and goes out, but we got liquid cooling this uh, to keep them cool in a marine application. So we're going to go over that and uh, just go over some tips and pointers. Uh, I don't know everything about these manifolds. Uh, if you want to chime in in the comments, you're welcome to, but we're just going to go over it and give you a visual aspect of everything. Let's get into her. So this manifold came off of a motor that uh, I got from a customer for free. Uh, the motor ran, it had a lot of issues. He got a really, really good deal on the boat uh, and he got a new motor for it because he knew that this one was hacked together. So you can see somebody has put tape around the bellows because they were cracked or burnt. I don't know, maybe we'll peel that off. Uh, when he bought the boat, it was cracked there and there. Uh, so it leaked just a little bit. We ran it like that for a year or so. Uh, but yeah, it was just pieced together this boat and he had a newer uh, V6 application. This is a V8 and we put that in a 4.3 liter instead of uh, this 305 that this came off of. So uh, we're just going to go over some uh, aspects of issues that they have, stuff to watch out for and just go from one side to the other. So you might be thinking that your exhaust manifold looks different. That's alright. There's uh, many different types of them. Uh, most of the new stuff is all center riser stuff like this um, and center dump but uh, on some of the older stuff you're going to get some that have removable caps on the ends of them and some of them where your riser goes up back here. Some of them have hoses going into the side on the real old stuff. Um, some of them won't have uh, hoses going out the middle here. Some will. Um, they all got stuff going into the riser though I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, a lot of them do not have that. So you're gonna have a plug in the middle, some have a plug on the back. So whatever one your boat has or application that you're relating to, just factor that all in that they're all different. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to just focus on this particular manifold. I'm trying to go on everything and just uh, explain the principle of them. So with our manifold tipped over here, you can see it's just like a regular car. Uh, your your uh, air goes through here. There's no um, fluid being mixed with these. People always think that there's fluid in here, but just by the engine running, it doesn't go back in the cylinders. That's false. If you had water in here when you'd shut off your motor, the water would go into the cylinders and ruin stuff. That can happen, and we're going to explain to that in a minute. Um, but there's your four. If, obviously, if you're a V6 application, you're only going to have three. Um, but yeah, that's as much as we're going to go for there. We're going to flip this thing back up and we'll get to taking this riser off or we're going to start at the back and go to the front actually. So we'll get this tip back up. But as you can see for now, this is the exact same as a car with without cooling. All right, so I've uh, loosened off the hose clamps on here. A lot of people wonder why rubber is on here and how it does not melt. So, your exhaust is dry in here, I mean it's not dry, it's separated from water all the way through here and into here and this is the point where your exhaust starts mixing with water. So uh, that's on a downhill slope so it can't run back in and uh, that is why it, you can have rubber because there's always water in the exhaust here and it keeps it cool that it doesn't get hot and that's why it doesn't melt. That's why you see if an impeller ever goes or something, these things are the first things to melt off because there's no water cooling it anymore and uh, essentially you got dry exhaust and these are the first things to burn up. So let's uh, pull off, I'm going to pull off this and pull off uh, our bellow and then we're going to take a look at the back of the exhaust manifold. All right. So, there's the back of our manifold off. So as you can see, it's just a rubber boot there, or bellow, and uh, metal again. So that goes over there like that. They're fun to pull off. There is a lip on there. Um, 
you can heat them up that's best if it, if they're cold if they're in the summer they come off nicely anyways so guys this is the point where water starts mixing with your exhaust so this being on a downhill slope as you can see water ain't running uphill um, the water comes through the water jackets of your exhaust manifold and comes out through these holes in here this dinosaur looking thing here right there so you can see right there 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 the water comes out goes around here and then that's this is the point where your dry exhaust and your wet exhaust mix right here the water comes down around and then it goes out through your exhaust uh, if that makes sense uh, so yeah, there that's how that part works. Next we're gonna get into our riser Okay, just to clarify from this is your exhaust manifold to here and this here is your riser some points. There's uh, Spacers in here to make your risers go up higher it all depends on the application of the boat and this one This is just a regular riser. There's always four, four bolts in these and as long as you have a uh, regular cool, cooling system boat, not a closed cooling system. The principle is always going to be the same in here. Okay, so our bolts are out there. We're going to pull off our riser. I just cracked the gasket loose. Um, probably weighs 20 pounds. Uh, so this is probably going to be our most problematic spot of an exhaust manifold ever that causes a lot of people issues that they can't solve. So, right here you have a gasket. This is your water jacket right here and here, here and here. So, uh, we'll start by looking inside, I guess, before we um, go to that. But uh, if we look in here, uh, so that's just all dry exhaust in there. So you can see it's just like a car, except they only go in, see those two holes there that's in turn right there same with one in there we're not going to be able to see over into there i don't think basically they all mix it's just one big chamber in there guys um so that's all dry in there this is where water is going through so essentially it's just like picture a regular car exhaust manifold with a box around it and the water goes through all the way around here in all these jackets all around here and comes through here and then goes up, we're gonna flip this over. Through those holes right there. I don't know why they limited them there with only the two holes. Like I said, you can chime in. I'm not a expert on these. We're just going over the anatomy of them, as we'll call it. Um, but the water goes in there and then, like I said earlier, it comes out around here and this is the point where your water gets mixed. So, uh, back to the most problematic issue, hang up my light, right here, if this exhaust gasket goes, I think you're supposed to replace these, inspect them every year and replace them every five or two, I, I, I'm not sure. Either way, it never gets done as regular as it should. These things will go 25 years or more, and then all of a sudden, one day Buddy checks his oil and there's going to be water in the oil. And he can't figure it out where it's coming from. He's got good compression on all cylinders. He knows his head gaskets aren't gone. Could be the intake manifold gaskets. Uh, he doesn't know what's wrong with it. What happens is you ask him and if they crank over their boat and uh, they get a that is water going into your cylinder. So what happens over time, a lot of guys it causes issues. They'll have a really small crack in here this water drips into here. There's nothing holding back if water gets into here. That's your cylinder. If water drips out of here, it's gonna go right into your cylinder and start ruining your exhaust valves because they've got water sitting on them. They all start rusting and crap in there and it, it doesn't end up good. And in turn, if you got a big enough leak and you're not getting just little driplets going in there, the water will go down through your cylinder. You're gonna get water in your oil and you can't figure out where it's coming from. So a lot of telltale signs to replace these is you'll see rust dripping down the outside and that's an external leak. That's the one you want. You don't want an internal one. So that's a main cause, I would say, of exhaust manifolds. It, the main problem with them is this riser gasket going and causing people um, issues with water and their oil.
and so on. But anyways, yeah, the water comes comes in. I'm not 100% sure if it comes in in your riser and in there. I'm not 100% sure on that. I would have to uh, um, to look up the flow specs on them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty well how an exhaust manifold works, guys. Your water comes in all the way around. That's how they stay cooled. Goes through here, and uh, goes goes out here. That's uh, your basic exhaust manifold run around. I don't want to drag this on for too long. If you have any questions or comments, uh, comment on it. But. Uh, a lot of guys, like you never see these pulled, these riser plugs anymore to drain your riser. Whenever I, I'm thinking that's because water could be caught in here, especially if there's no holes in there. I've seen them without holes in there before. Um, but I always, whenever I winterize these, I always dump it through here, my antifreeze, and then I know it goes through the riser and then down and it comes out this bottom hose. But uh, yeah, that's your whole anatomy of how an exhaust manifold works. All right guys, well thanks for watching. I tried not to make that too boring, uh, but if you wanna learn about exhaust manifolds and see them taken apart, there you go. I don't know if there's too much more of an exciting way to really do it, but anyways, that's it. Uh, like I said, tried to keep it short and there you go. And also, like I said, I'm not, I mean, I'm a boat mechanic, but I'm not an expert on all the engineering of this stuff. So if you got any comments to chime in, I'm not going to be offended. Make them. Um, I'd like to know exactly how that water flows through them. If it does come in here and in the bottom one, or if it goes in the bottom one and, and out there to exit through your block and some goes out the exhaust. I'm not sure. I just know the principle of it. Anyways. Have a good one guys and thanks for watching and uh, like I say, I'd appreciate your comments. Check out uh, my other marine videos and I'll have them in, uh, in my boat playlist here. As always guys, thanks for watching and please give the channel a like and a subscribe. If my videos interest you, please click on my channel and check out my other videos.